Why, hello there, and welcome to a very special episode. I'm here with my guest star, Brandon, and we're going to talk about something close, very dear to our hearts, the legend, the man, Bill Murray. Bill Murray's been close to my heart as an actor for quite a long time. And uh, there's quite a few movies that have stuck with me over the years. And it's his birthday today, so it got in my mind that it'd be worth listing off some of my favorites. Um, my favorite Bill Murray movie, uh, I'd say, is What About Bob? with uh, Richard Dreyfus, directed by Frank Oz. And uh, Bill Murray plays Bob Wiley, a uh, neurotic patient going from uh, therapist to therapist. And... Uh, yeah, so it's Richard Dreyfus being the uh, immovable object and Bill Murray being the unstoppable force. And yeah, that movie has all sorts of roller coaster. It's got all sorts of Bill Murray. It's got all sorts of Bill Murray. Uh, that movie's particularly hilarious in um, The Puppets. Where the Richard Dreyfus uses puppets to deal with people. And it's just how ludicrous he is, and like how ludicrous psychology is in general. Like that's the the big thing they imply in that movie. Yeah, baby steps. Baby steps to the elevator, Brian. That's right. Oh man, it's classic. And his gold fish and the necklace. Um, <laughs> it's so unforgettable. Yeah. Uh, everything about that movie is utterly hilarious. But yeah, I think it was murder therapy, and then uh, man, that scene too is the best where. Uh, Richard Dreyfus ends up tying him up, uh, Leo, the doctor, and uh, he's tied up and he's he's like coming to terms with it, like I am the bomb and I'm all, <laughs> and the only way is if I untie myself, we're all in, all explode. <laughs> but yeah, great, great scene. Yeah, and like, it's one of those things where like they put him in the nut house, and Richard Dreyfus is like, finally, I've gotten rid of him. And he goes to the nut house to see how he's doing. And Bill Murray's got everyone in stitches, which I think is Bill Murray's natural state, is everybody's just laughing and having a good time around him. But he's got all the, the staff. He's got all the staff just laughing and joking, and everyone there is like, oh, he doesn't have a problem. He's completely healthy and normal. But they don't know what Richard Dreyfus knows. They don't know. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, no, it's charisma's through the roof. And, uh, yeah, everyone but Richard Dreyfus doesn't see it. But, uh, yeah, no, that's that's great. Uh, another movie, I don't know, have you seen Ed Wood? No, I haven't. Go on. Tell me all about uh, it. A Tim Burton movie, and it has Johnny Depp playing Ed Wood. It's actually based on a true story. And um, uh, Bill Murray plays uh, Bunny Breckenridge. But, uh, yeah, the movie follows Ed Wood and all the people around him as he makes his legacy of movies. It also has... Uh, yeah, Ed Wood fellow- did a lot of, like, cheap... Uh, B movies, monster movies, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and that was that's a black and white movie back when Tim Burton was just starting out as well. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. Actually, Bill Murray plays a transvestite in that movie. <laughs> Does he really? Yeah, it's it's quite fantastic. As the least sexy transvestite in the history of le- <laughs> unsexy transvestites. He sings K Sera in a meat locker, actually, and that's that's quite forgettable. That uh, that reminds me of uh, Little Plant Shop of Horrors, where he plays the uh, masochist. Arthur Denton is the character Bill Murray plays in Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, he uh, goes in and Steve uh, Martin Steve. starts doing the dental work on there. He gets in there and he's wrenching and stuff. And Bill Murray's like, thank you! Thank you! Well, of course, it's Steve Martin's endeavor because the whole reason he's a dentist is to cause people pain. And then he gets uh, Arthur Denton, who's a uh, mas- uh, masochistic, so like he can't get enough pain. So it's, yeah, that's a- another great scene. Yeah, uh, he does some of the best cameos in the history of amazing cameos. Uh, like, speaking of cameos, um, Zombie Land mm-hmm. is probably my favorite cameo. Uh, of course, him playing himself and dying in the most perfect of ir- ir- ironic ways. Dressing up like a zombie in the zombie apocalypse to kind of deal with it, and then being shot mistakenly for a zombie. You know? Like <laughs> yeah. His acting is just too good. Yeah. Do you have any regrets? Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> 
which was funny. It was funny him doing Garfield because um, he had acted in Ghostbusters as Peter Venkman, and then they did a Ghostbusters cartoon. And in the cartoon, they got someone else to do the voice of Peter Venkman. Well, the person who did Peter Venkman's voice in the Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters cartoon, went on to do the voice of Garfield in Garfield and Friends, right? So same actor played Peter Venkman and Garfield in the cartoons. Well, when they wanted to do a Garfield movie, they asked Bill Murray, because your voice actor, you sound the same deliberately. Maybe you want to take that role. And he took it. <laughs> That's, that is hilarious. Yeah. A small Hollywood world for that. Yeah, I always found the that path, that connection, that road that led to him doing Garfield always very interesting. Yeah, another great classic that Bill Murray's, that Bill Murray's probably most known for is Groundhog's Day. Oh, Groundhog's Day is like my all-time favorite Bill Murray film. It's actually okay. possibly one of my top five films of all time. Uh, yeah, I've probably seen it as many times as it repeats in the movie. Yeah, uh, I saw a meme that said uh, they should announce they're remaking Groundhog's Day and then theatrically release the original. <laughs> of course, they did. I I don't remember uh, what TV station it was, but uh, one of them did a Groundhog's Day marathon where they just repeatedly played. <laughs> <the song. laughs> and, uh, That's and awesome. The commercials, the commercials would play three times in a row. Every time. Wow. It was that's, that's brilliant. I, on Groundhog's Day, to play Groundhog's Day over and over and over again, that is that is some genius stuff right there. Yeah, somebody should get a pat on the back, for I know, sure. it's, it's funny how synonymous the term Groundhog's Day has become, right? Like, internationally, Groundhog's Day isn't a thing. It's very much an American holiday. And it's a holiday that's... Uh, it's a, the coming of spring holiday, right? It's a rejuvenation holiday. And over the years, like, it's kind of become an American tradition. But then this movie comes out starring Bill Murray, which it, Groundhog's Day repeats itself. And now when you say, I'm living through Groundhog's Day, it, it means you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Right? Like, it's changed. Like, Groundhog's Day internationally now means to live the same day over. Yeah, it's true. Uh um... Harold Ramis, the director, probably uh, didn't mean to cause a whole expression due to his movie, but I mean, it, yeah, it definitely did. It had a cultural impact. Like, Bill, Bill Murray and the movies he does have massive impacts, and uh, I, I like that. I like that. I f uh, would you say Groundhog's Day is Bill Murray's uh, most prevalent movie, or would you say there's another? Uh, yeah, um, I, I could agree with that. That is definitely his most prevalent movie. Yeah, I I would say it comes down to that or Ghostbusters. Yeah, that is a big one. But that is definitely uh, one of the shared spotlights with uh, Rick Moranis and Dan Aykroyd and uh, the rest of them. Harold Ramis and Ernie Hudson and whatnot. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree that they're definitely th those two movies stand out in his career, like above all. You know, like they are the, the jewels in his crown, you know? But I mean, uh, yeah, his career's not over as well. Uh, he just did Saint Vincent. If you've seen that, I saw, with, um, I saw the trailer and it looked really good. I watched it. I, I enjoyed it actually. I uh, I really thought it was good for a newer film. Mm -hmm. uh, it, he plays kind of like that Yoda Obi Wan Kenobi character in it, doesn't he? To like a young child. There's like a student and whatever, and he helps him out. Yeah, if Yoda's a slightly abusive alcoholic, then yes. You know what? You, you're saying Yoda's not? Well, oh, he mean, beats it's... Luke Skywalker with the, his cane, yells at him, makes him carry him around, lift this, do that. Meanwhile, he's like an insane old man living on his own. You're telling me he's not drunk half the time, too? Oh, of course. That fog water was carbonated. I know what's going on. Yeah. Have you seen Moonrise Kingdom? I have not. What, uh, what is that about? It's a, a little island in the west coast, I do believe. It might be the east coast, actually. And they've got a lighthouse, and he's got, like, 15 children, right? And uh, one of the little kids decides that they're unhappy with being ignored, so uh, I think it's one of his daughters. She runs off, and there's, like, a boy scout, and the boy scout ends up 
ta uh, like they go and they're like, we're going to live in the woods together because we're going to care about each other because nobody cares about us. Right? And like Bill sure. Murray and um, Edward Norton and Bruce Willis go on this huge venture to like find her and this missing Boy Scout. Interesting. That's quite the cast. It's Yeah, it's a very well cast movie. And um, it's very kind of like a dry humor. Uh, it's very Wes Anderson. I don't know if Wes Anderson actually directed it, but uh, it's that style. It was directed by... Da -da 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 -da. It, it was directed by Wes Anderson. <laughs> it was nice. a very Wes Anderson movie. I was correct. <laughs> it all lines up and makes sense now. No, I'll definitely check that out immediately. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to check to see who who's all in the cast. Uh, Tilda Swinson is also in the cast. Uh, Jason Schwartzman, uh, Bob Balaban. Uh, if you see him, you'd know who he is. Of course. But, uh, yeah, it's got a very, very good cast. But, uh, yeah, he's, yeah. um, like I said, he plays the dad, and they, they live in the lighthouse, so it's got, like, ten floors and, like, a room or two per floor. And, you know, all, there's so many children, you can hardly keep track of them. And, like, he, I think it's, like, a day or two before he even realizes his daughter is missing. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, her and this Boy Scout to go live out in the woods together and like uh, Edward Norton's the Boy Scout leader and Bruce Willis is the town sheriff cop. He's the one cop on the island, right? So when they realize the kids are missing, he gets called. Yeah. Yeah. Another uh, classic Bill Murray movie, uh, Caddyshack. Mm. Yes, where he's the groundskeeper. Yeah, he plays um, uh, Carl Spackler. Yeah, go on. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, great lineup in that as well with Chevy Chase and uh, Rodney Dangerfield. And uh, man, yeah, that movie's nonstop laps. It's timeless. But uh, Bill Murray plays Carl Spackler, uh, the uh, slightly insane groundskeeper who's constantly trying to kill a gopher, which uh, it seems Bill Murray might be tied to gophers. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's all you got for Caddyshack. All I really got about it. I mean, I go for it. it's, it's I, I, made, I made the gopher joke. Uh, it's all there. It's all there. Well, they had the I, puppet gopher in that one. Yeah. Oh my god. But it's great. It's so cheesy. It's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bill Murray's interaction with the gopher. It's it's mainly him and that creature interacting with one another. Yeah, it almost seems like it's not even known to anyone else that there's a gopher problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, that movie is so ridiculous. Like, they honestly, that movie could have survived completely without the gopher and Bill Murray plot. They could have cut that out and the movie would have, like, I don't think it would have been as enjoyable, but, like, the plot would have been fine without him. Well, absolutely, but, I mean, it's the difference of that whipped cream and cherry on top for your Sunday, you know? Yeah. It's it it's what makes it worth getting, you know. Yeah, exactly. There's another Bill Murray movie that uh, is not really well known because it got overshadowed by Johnny Depp, and that's where the Buffaloes Roam, where he plays um, Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah. Right, and uh, he goes on a wild adventure, and all this stuff happens, but uh, it later on the role would be taken over by Johnny Depp in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and The Rum Diary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is pretty insane. The interesting part about that movie is he went and lived with Hunter S. Thompson to kind of get a feel for him. And Hunter S. Thompson was like, like, hey, let's go hang out by the the pool and we'll talk and we'll chat and, you know, I'll you know, give you kind of an insight into my life and who I am. And Bill Murray says, sure. Now, he's working on SNL at the time, right? So he had taken, like, a sabbatical from SNL to go do this. So they're on the the side of the pool, they're talking, whatever, and Hunter S. Thompson's there with his long cigarette, and he goes and grabs some rope, and he starts tying Bill Murray to his chair, and he's, like, talking about whatever, and this, that, and the other, and Bill Murray's like, yeah, yeah, and he's, like, really into it, he's like, yeah, sure, whatever, and he's like, cool, and then once he gets them all tied up, he pushed him into the pool, and walked away, and almost killed Bill Murray. Ah! Yeah. And, like, Bill Murray, like, obviously survived and got out, and, like, he said, and people said after that event, after... Uh, Hunter did that to him. Bill Murray kind of cracked and 
embodied Hunter from there forward. He was smoking the long cigarettes back when he was working at SNL, talking like him, acting like him. He he, he had literally become Hunter. And wow. it, he, like he had become a dick like Hunter, and, it, and a lot of people were saying it was hard for him to shake that role after he had after that event in his life. That's interesting. That's really weird. Yeah, Hunter Hunter's like a weird guy. Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah. Now so much drugs. I, I think it's great, and it's true. It doesn't get nearly as much as acknowledgement as it should. Is it's uh, it's great. He really embodies it for sure, like you were saying, and. Uh, I found it a great movie, but uh, Johnny Depp really does overshadow it, and that that movie got way more recognition. Yeah, it got way more traction. It was a trippier movie, like the scene in the bar where he's high on mescaline, I believe, and it starts doing all those Dutch angles where the camera kind of turns, and all of a sudden Johnny Depp sees everyone as uh, lizards and dinosaurs, and he's like, there were dinosaurs everywhere. They wanted to eat my flesh. I knew I had to escape. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of imagery in that movie for sure. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, uh, I didn't find where the Buffalo Rome really did that that much. It was very much a straightforward adventure story, as narrated by Hunter S. Thompson, uh, Bill Murray, where it starts off with him on the typewriter, like naked, smoking the cigar in like his cabin there. Paranoid, looking from window to window between. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Brandon Mayhew. I'm Justin Mayhew. And uh, thanks for joining us. This has been Bill Murray's Best Works. On a very special episode.